Hello, underachievers. So, I am on day five of COVID. I've been isolating on my own for five days. Not fun. So, if I seem not great, that is why. Also, just a few things before I get into the video. First thing, I'm going on tour in September. Here are the dates. You should grab a ticket below. They're not expensive at all. It's 12 pounds uh, and you'll have a great time. Second thing, I have a new song called Worms Out and I've got a music video out. So check the link in the description to listen and watch. Oh, also I have new merch. I have this really cute worm pin. I've got a new hoodie and I've got a Worms t-shirt. So check that out if that's something you're interested in. If not, Valid. So I've made a few videos about boarding school before. I'm pretty sure I deleted most of them There's one left that I recorded like a few years ago uh, But I didn't go into that much detail and I just feel like my opinions may have changed since then So I thought why not do another one? There's a lot of people asking questions. So yeah, I'm 22 right now uh, But from the ages of 13 to almost 18 I went to an ex-naval boarding school. So let's break that down. Ex-naval boarding school. Well, I I'm sure a lot of you will know what a boarding school is. A boarding school is a school where you can live, where you sleep. There are different types of boarders at my school. You could either be a full boarder so that you, you know, you stay the entire term or you could be a different kind of boarder where you only go home on weekends. I was a part-time boarder, so I went home on Wednesday nights and Saturday nights, but you'll find out later on in the video, it was never really that simple. And ex-naval, as in it used to be a naval school, it was a school that prepared boys, uh, it used to be a boys only school, it was a school that prepared boys to go into the Navy, and that's what they did back then, whereas nowadays, it's an ex-naval boarding school. It's a boarding school that has like pretty much all of the naval traditions without preparing everybody to go into the Navy, you know. I, I didn't go in the Navy. No plan whatsoever to do that. Although there are a few people from my school that did go into the forces. N not a fan at all, to be honest. Of the forces, not those people. So the first naval tradition that my school kept was that we wore naval uniforms. Yes, correct. Naval uniforms that apparently we got the Queen's permission to wear, which my school loved to bang on about. But we wore naval uniforms. We had different types of naval uniforms, we didn't just have one, because one apparently isn't enough. I'll get into more detail about the uniform later, but right now that's all you need to know. We also marched and did parades, and we had actual naval officers come in and inspect our parades, so yeah, there was just a bunch of kids just marching around. Naval uniforms? Bit weird to be honest, that's not a normal experience. The, the, the longer I've been out of this school, the more I realised that my life was not normal when I was in that school. We also did CCF, which was compulsory for a few years. Uh, CCF stands for Combined Cadet Forces, so pretty much you could join like the Naval Forces, you could be in the Marines, you could be Air Cadets, uh, or you could be Army, I'm pretty sure I chose Army. We were taught how to use rifles, we were taught how to like camouflage ourselves, we were taught how to make fires, all that Kind of fun stuff uh, that teenagers love doing. Another weird tradition we had was that we had a school flag that came up and came down every single day. And something that's really weird is that whenever the flag went up or went down, everybody on the parade ground had to be completely silent and completely still. So if you know your parents were picking you up in their car and you see the flag go up, your parent has to stop the car just in the middle of the grounds. Um, and you know, we had to salute the flag when we marched past it. It was a lot. We also had like naval roles, I guess. I don't actually remember any of them because I did not participate in that feel like I'm not giving off the vibe of wanting to be part of that. Uh, but we had like cadet captains, we had chief cadet captains of each division. They had specific roles. It wasn't the real navy, it was just, it was just words we used. I guess the last thing that I can think of that's like an old naval tradition is we had like naval jargon. So we called things by the naval name, so like an example would be that the kitchen in our boarding houses were called the galleys. Our dormitories were called cabins. Our living room was called the gun room. And our boarding houses were called divisions. This is all just like really surface level stuff, but it's kind of, it will give you an image of what the school was kind of like. People ask if it was like Hogwarts. It was, it was like Hogwarts, but we marched. Obviously I can't get through everything about the school, but if you have any comments, then put them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer your questions. I feel like this video needs a tiny, it, it's a little bit more context. I was a girl throughout my entire school life, so I didn't come out as a guy uh, until I finished school. So, all throughout school, all throughout boarding school, I was a girl, lived in a girl's boarding house. It was a mixed school, but I lived in a girl's boarding house. Was called a girl name, wore the girl's uniform, just girl, girl, girl. Everything girl. And that's kind of what this video is about. Um, not just in terms of my gender, but sexuality as well. But it, it's about what it was like being in the closet at an ex-naval boarding school. So I asked you guys to ask me questions about this topic and let's just get into them. Uh, so the first question is, what was the general routine like? So the routine for these five years was very intense. Um, it is not like a normal school. We had school six days a week. So we had school on Saturdays and if we had parades on Sundays, we would stay the Saturday night and do parades on Sundays and have school seven days a week, which is really cute. But 
The average day, pretty much, if you're a boarder like I was, you would wake up just before breakfast at 7 a.m. You'd walk across the parade ground in the freezing cold, go get some breakfast. W was was not great. The food was not great. We'll get onto that later. Uh, we go get some breakfast at 7 a.m., then get back to house, get changed, have a shower, whatever, and then we'd have registration in-house at 8 a.m. And then every single day we had something different for a morning activity, so that could be like just a house muster where we talk about stuff that's going on in the week or an assembly which happened once or twice a week or like oh my god Saturdays we had what we called congas which is called uh, you know it's congregational singing where we don't sing fun songs we, we just sing hymns uh, we sing hymns at congas so after the morning activity we would start lessons at 9 a.m. we'd have two lessons and then a break and then either two lessons and lunch or three lessons and lunch depending what term it was uh, we had five lessons uh, a day. And then after, you know, two lessons lunch, two lessons lunch, a lesson, then every single day we had an hour and a half of activities, four days a week that was an hour and a half of sports, and then one day a week it would be CCF, which is the army stuff where you learn how to shoot things. But yeah, four days a week we had an hour and a half of sports. You'd finish sports around 6 p.m. and then at 6 p.m. supper would start. Uh, we called it supper, not dinner. And then we'd go back to house have a registration again, just make sure everything's okay. And then at 7 p.m. we had an hour and a half of compulsory homework time, which we called prep. So, you know, start the day, 7 a.m. breakfast, and then you don't finish the day, really, until 8.30, because prep starts at 7 p.m. and then it finishes at 8.30. So from 8.30 p.m. onwards until bedtime, you could do whatever you want, except no, you couldn't. There was special rules about like leaving house and where you're allowed to go. You were not allowed to leave the school grounds because the school was in the middle of nowhere on top of a hill. Sounding more and more like prison, uh, the more I talk about it. But yeah, from 7 a.m. until 8.30 p.m., you had like a strict routine that you could not, you could not get out of that. 8.30 p.m. until bedtime, which for third formers, which is a 13 year old, which is year nine, which is eighth grade. So in eighth grade, the bedtime would be quarter to 10. So, you know, the free time that you have all day is 8.30, until quarter to ten, which is not a lot. And then when you go to bed at quarter to ten, if you're 13, your phone also gets taken away from you. There were a lot of very strict uh, routines, uh, which were very hard to break out from after you leave school, as you can imagine. So that was like the usual day. As I said, we went to school six days a week, but Saturday school was kind of a half day. I don't really know if finishing school at 2 p.m. counts as a half day. I feel like a lot of people finish school at 2, 3 p.m. on a normal day. But you know, we had half days on Saturdays and on Wednesdays, but I was a sports scholar and I was in a lot of the sports teams. So every Wednesday and every Saturday we'd have a match. So sometimes you'd finish school on Wednesday at 2 p.m., go to a match and it could be hours away, could take hours and maybe you get back to school at 6 p.m. So in a lot of ways, if you did sport, you didn't have a half day on Wednesday and Saturday. You kind of just had like school and then more school sports. Oh yeah, I just remembered one of the school activities was that you'd, you know, march onto the parade ground, sometimes in the freezing cold, and you would like line up on the parade ground. Everybody in the school would line up on the parade ground and stand completely still as if it were a parade. It was, it was kind of parade practice of which we had like parade practice maybe once or twice a week in the morning. But this is what I'm talking about. So uh, we would line up on parade ground and stand still for ages whilst uh, our uniforms were inspected by an adult. So pretty much you just stand still and then someone would come through the ranks of your divisions and they'd have a look at, at your arms, see if you have any bracelets on. And if you had any bracelets on, they would cut them off because you weren't allowed to wear bracelets. You know, if your hair wasn't done properly, you get told off for it. If your shoes weren't polished, you get told off for that. It, it was... <laughs> It was an ex-naval boarding school with just like feeling like you're in the Navy. Once a week we also had bedroom inspections where the house mistress and another member of staff, it changed every week, they would come round and look in every single person's dormitory and rate it out of 10. And when I tell you they are strict, they are strict. Sometimes the headmaster would do it and if there was a single crease on your duvet, you would get marked down. I remember starting that school at the age of 13 and you know, I didn't make my bed before I went to that school because I'm like, I'm just going to sleep in it the next night. What's the point? I had to learn pretty quickly like how to make my bed, how to like hoover properly, how to dust everything, which I guess they're like valuable skills. And I, I already knew how to hoover, but I just think it's weird. I think, I think it's a bit weird having like a fully grown six foot seven headmaster come through an all girls boarding house, enter their private personal space and then rate how tidy their room is. Just a bit, just a bit weird, but just a, bit, just a quirky thing that we did at my school. So next question, did anyone there know you were trans? Uh, <laughs> this is a difficult question to answer. I feel like there's also more context needed. So I was a girl in school throughout the whole of school. I did not come out publicly at school 
at all. But what did happen was, you know, maybe a few years into school, I may have started this whole social media thing where I started posting YouTube videos. Some of which you can go back and watch my old videos and see that they were filmed in my school dormitory. Um, but you know, I, I, I started this Instagram thing and this YouTube thing while I was in school. But the Instagram, the YouTube, my, my name was Noah. I was Newt. I was either going by they, them pronouns or just telling people that my name was Noah and hoping they would use he, him for me. So this is a very difficult question to answer because technically, did I come out publicly in school? No, but I did have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram before I finished school under the name Noah Where I clearly looked like a guy. So, you know, there are a few people that found that account I'll talk about that later in terms of did I come out to anybody at school? There was like two or three people that I came out to as trans at that school on Facebook I just messaged them. They were fine with it obviously, but like Unless you were really close with me, and even people that were really close with me didn't know. No, no one knew unless they found my Instagram and YouTube, which I'm still not sure how many people knew about it before I left, but yeah. <laughs> so the next question is, did anyone in the boarding school find out about you being Noah online? So this question came up really quick. Yes, they did. Although I went through my account and blocked every single person from the school that I could find. I, I, I had this account, blocked everyone that I could. Obviously, the people found the YouTube, they found the Instagram, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure if it like got, got, got sent around to people. A few times while I was at school, there were people that made like expose hate accounts about me where they would like post my birth name, post my parents' name, post which school I went to, post about the fact that I was born a girl. But they would do it in a nasty way, obviously. They'd be like, oh, she's actually a girl and she goes to this school and this is her real name. On several occasions, there were people that made uh, accounts like that. And I, I can only assume that there were people from my school. I assume someone from my school maybe made at least one of them. I was told that one of my closest guy friends who stopped talking to me all of a sudden, wonder why that was. It was because he found out I was identifying as non-binary at that point. He apparently at some point told his whole boarding house about the fact that I was online and no online and that I was not binary uh, in, in a not very favorable way. He's apologized since, uh, so that that's fine there. A lot of these questions are difficult to answer because I don't know the extent to which people actually knew what was going on. There are a few people that came up to me being like, ah, YouTube, and I'd be like, ha, ah, yeah. Um, because at that point I hadn't told YouTube or Instagram that I was trans, I didn't use that term trans, I just used the, the term non-binary. So when people came up to me and were like, oh YouTube, I'd be like, oh, okay, don't dwell on this, don't talk about this, change the subject, because I don't want you to ask any questions. But yeah, by the time I finished this school, they were like, pe people knew I did YouTube, they knew I did Instagram, I'm pretty sure most of them that were interested probably had a look at it, um, but nobody really confronted me about the Noah thing, or about the trans thing or about the details of that kind of stuff, because I feel like if they did see it, maybe they respected it enough to be like, hey, this is, I know it's all over the internet, but maybe it's personal, maybe I shouldn't bring it up. Or maybe they were just too scared to bring it up. But I, I don't know, I don't know. I'd still love to go back to that school and just ask every single person if they knew. I would, I would love that more than anything. So somebody asked, why were you there in the first place? Um, this question. The reason I ended up going to this school was that my brother went to this school before me and they had a really good music school and my brother was really into music so he went to this school and he got a scholarship which meant he had money off the fees. He also had a bursary which meant that if your parents earn less than the average parent that goes there you get fees off the school. So he was there, had a bursary, had a scholarship, had a good music school and you know he, he had really bad ADHD and you know my parents thought that like this amount of structure would be good for him and it was really good for him. My brother had a great time at that school. The reason I went there because my parents were just like, oh, it would be unfair if we gave your brother this opportunity to go to this school that, you know, has somewhat good facilities. But they're like, you know, you should go to this school. If, if you want to go, you can go. I visited other schools. There was one other school I was interested in that thinking back would have suited me so much better, but I saw this school and I was like, oh, it's cool. They march. For some reason, I thought that was cool. There was a marching band, thought that was cool. I, I thought the uniform was cool. Uh, I was 13 and I was really good at sports and they liked sports at that school. They had pretty good sports teams. So I was like, yeah. I'll go. It was never like a punishment thing. It was never like my parents sent me away to get rid of me at all because like we we all, you know, we all missed each other. But the reason I went to that school is because my brother went to that school. I got a sports scholarship, money off. We both had bursaries. It was still very expensive, but like we had a lot of the fees taken off. But yeah, I went because my parents were just like, this is an opportunity. Maybe you'll have a step up. Uh, so I went. And I'm not mad at all about my parents sending me to that school because they like, how would they know that it was not the right school for me unless I went? Somebody asked, do you feel that an all girls 
all-girls boarding school had an influence in you becoming gay? Um, first off, it was not an all-girls boarding school. A lot of people think it was because I stayed in an all-girls boarding house. Did it have an influence on me becoming gay? Uh, no, that, that's not how sexuality works. But if I was a lesbian, I probably would have had a great time. I don't think that kind of environment would influence anybody to, you know, have a specific sexuality because that's not how sexuality works. All I know is that it was not the right environment. But anybody who was LGBT, but we'll get onto that later. Somebody asked, do you think it would have been easier to come out if you're in public school instead? 100%, 100%, million percent, 10 million trillion billion percent. I, I did not come out at school at all in any way, shape or form because I knew I would not be able to. I knew the school would not be able to handle it. I would be relentlessly bullied. It would not have gone down well at all. I, and I, I know for a fact that it wouldn't. There were like two people at my school that were like out as gay and they were only out as gay because they were outed and you know they were not treated great so yeah there was no chance of me coming out of this boarding school as well as like if i came out would i still be in the girls boarding school would i still have to wear the girls uniform it is a very uh a traditional environment with very traditional and enforced gender roles there were very different activities for girls and boys. This school is still like 30 years behind maybe in terms of that kind of stuff again Get onto that later. But I feel like if I went to a public school, if I came home every night and you know, if I was having a shit time at school, I could at least come home and escape that a bit. Whereas if I was at boarding school and I took the risk of coming out, and I had to stay there all week, no escape, living with people that maybe would not like the fact that I was trans. Like, I, it just was not a possibility. And I don't think anybody that went to that school would disagree with that. Like, I really don't think anyone would disagree with that. Maybe in like, honestly, like 20 years time, maybe it would be possible to come out as trans at that school. I, yeah. That, that was not a possibility. The school was like very small. It was like 400 pupils, so very tiny. There weren't even really clicks. So there was no chance of there being like, you know how a, I don't know how accurate this is because I've never been to a school like that. But like, I just have the idea that like in bigger schools, all the gay kids like flock towards each other. They have like GSAs. They have like their friends that are like them. My school was not like that. I had friends, but I did not have friends that were like me at all. If you get me, like they were lovely, nice people. They were great, lovely people, but we, we just were not in the same, like, world. I already didn't fit in, and I wasn't really bullied for it, to be honest. There was always, like, snide comments or whatever, but it wasn't, like, relentless bullying. And it, ugh, I can't, even thinking about trying to come out of that school makes me stress. Like, it actually gives me anxiety. So we're moving on. Somebody asked, what was the food like? I feel like whenever I talk about, like, the bad aspects of this school, that it comes across as, like, ungrateful. But, like, obviously in, in every school, there's gonna be things that aren't that great. For the money that we paid for this school and for the way it was presented, it should have been a lot better. Um, but the food was not good. It was not good at all. And, like, I feel ungrateful even saying that. But it, it wasn't good. I remember at one point when I was maybe in fifth form, which was 30, 40, when I was, like, 15, there was, like, an email email sent to every student in the school to fill out this survey about how they felt about the school food and I'm pretty sure like we voted that like 95% of the kids did not like the school food. It was not good, it, it was rarely fresh because there was like a two hour slot where people could have lunch. There was food that was left out for two hours and obviously if you leave food out for two hours, it, it's not gonna be great. I remember getting really excited when there were like little pots of jelly that I could have, but more often than not, you went to go get a jelly and there was like a skin over it and I don't know how that happens with jelly. I don't know enough about jelly to understand it, but I don't really wanna think about it too much. You also weren't allowed more than one protein. You know, at a school that you're paying that much money for, you'd think, oh, you can have ham and cheese in your sandwich. No, you could either have ham or cheese. You could not have meat and cheese. You could not have two proteins. You just, you just weren't allowed it. You just, you just couldn't have it. I remember a few times going to have food and the chefs had forgotten to like put it in the oven. I remember being served frozen curly fries. I don't know if that is an easy mistake to make. I was going to be like, oh, you know, easy mistake to make, but is it? I feel like you get, you get bagged curly fries, you think, oh, I need to cook these before I give them to children. And this sounds fake, we were also given pigeon sausages. Uh, and maybe it's a delicacy, but not the pigeon sausages we were given. They fed us pigeon. They, wh why, why would you give teenagers pigeon? Pigeon? The teenagers don't want to eat pigeons. I don't want to ever eat a pigeon. It was f***ing gross. I'll see if I can try and find some pictures of the school food. If I find them, here is a picture. Gross, right? But yeah, the school food was not good. Um, and you know, after that survey came out where they find that like 95% of students did not like the school food, what do they do? They did not change caterers. They did not do anything to change the food. 
What did they do? They just did up the mess hall, which is like the dining hall. They just they just added LED strips under the serving places. They added like a glass thing to the mess hall. They, you know, they added lights. They changed the surfaces a bit. You know, they dressed things up, but they didn't change the food because they, they just wanted it to look nice. Uh, they didn't really care about how it tasted. Which I feel bad again about saying because like the lunch ladies and the lunch guys, they were really nice. They were really lovely. What were the other kids like? My experience with boarding school kids was a lot of classism. Yes, absolutely. And I really did not know what classism properly was until I left that school. Obviously, there were some very lovely kids that went to this school. The kind of kids that went to my school were either, their parents were in the army, um, and they would get like 90% of the fees off. They had scholarships, so they got a lot of the fees off. Or they were like rich, twatty, conservative kids who could not get into the other boarding schools because they weren't smart enough. There was, a, there, was a, there was a mix of those kind of types of people. And like, obviously some of them were nice, but I guess I just did not realize how weird the world I was living in was until I left. The things these kids talked about, like there were specifically kids that were just obsessed with the conservative party. And I'm not even making this up. Like it sounds ridiculous, but like all they talked about was politics and the conservative party and how stupid lefties are. And just like, you know, the, the classic things, stuff like that. And I remember like going to a few parties cause I, I didn't really want to go to parties. I remember going to a few parties and at one of the parties kids were chanting like, we only shop at Waitrose. We only shop at Waitrose. If you're not from the UK and you don't know what Waitrose is, it's just like the most expensive grocery shop where you get your food. But they chant things like that and just like, they'd make fun of public school kids. I can't remember specific instances, but like looking back, I remember in conversation, like just people being like, oh, and yeah, and he goes to a, he goes to the, uh, you know, the state school. He goes to the local state school. And I'm like, okay. Okay, he goes to a different school than us. But just like that casual kind of classism, and obviously racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, all of the phobias, all the isms were there. And obviously not every kid was like that. There are a bunch of absolutely lovely people, but there are also a bunch of people that just like were not real people. I would not be surprised to see them in British Parliament in maybe 30 years because they're in that circle of, you know, they, 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 they'd be best friends with Boris Johnson. Too much money, too much privilege, and not enough care for anybody that wasn't like them. But yeah, a lot of classism, a lot of those kind of things. I'm, I, I guess I'm, I wouldn't use the word lucky because like, whatever, but I, I guess I'm kind of lucky that I wasn't like dragged into that, if you get what I mean. Cause I feel like in that environment, like living at this school, barely going home and seeing the real world, just like living on the top of a hill in the middle of nowhere. These are the people you're surrounded with. Like it's no wonder that these people just end up breeding with each other and having terrible conservative <laughs> prejudice offspring. I'm lucky that I was never, you know, part of that whole thing, but there was, there was a lot of it and it was not great. And I feel like I'm trying to be like, oh, I'm better than them. But like, I just like, I, I just like, I'm... these people do not know the real world. There was maybe like three or four students at the school that weren't white. The two people that were out as gay were outed and not treated great. Luckily, most of my closest friends I met on the internet and you know, I was exposed to all different kinds of people. Uh, which I feel like you should be, but like living in that place, yeah. Just gonna end this question there, lots of classism, yeah. Did anyone question if you were a girl? I can't remember every single instances. There's two that, you know, are on the top of my head. So the first, the first thing that happened was I went to go get my school uniform. We had to go to the school uniform shop, had to get fitted for the uniform. It was ridiculous. Three uniforms, a sports kit, so much. But you know, I went to the school uniform shop and my mum was like, oh, we, we need to be fitted for a uniform, please. And the person who was in the uniform shop like directed us to the boys uniform. And my mom had to be like, nope, wrong, wrong uniform. So that, that was, that was before I even started the school. That was the thing that happened. And of course, like my brother was in the upper sixth when I started school. So my brother was like, I guess a senior and I was 13 and his friends would like jokingly shout like, Zach's brother, which I loved. Cause I was like, yeah, I am Zach's brother. There was that kind of thing. There were a lot of like jokes about like me looking like a guy, which didn't bother me. Didn't care about looking like a guy. I cared that people were saying those things to upset me. My favorite uh, example of this is like my first chemistry lesson ever. I was the only girl in my class, uh, but I looked like a little boy meeting the new teacher. And he's like, oh, there are no girls in this class. And of course, by this point, I like met everybody in the class kind of. We had been through like registration and like, you know, starter activities. So obviously at that point when the teacher was like, oh, no girls, everyone looked at me and everyone was like, nope, that's a girl, that's a girl. And I was like, ah. And the teacher did not believe these guys. He was like, nah, you're not a girl. You're not a girl. You're not a girl. Stand up, stand up. Let me see your skirt. And of course he, he made me stand up in front of the whole class. I had a skirt and he was like looking at me up and down and he was like, hmm, feel like he's 
still didn't believe me, but 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 that was that kind of stuff. I feel like people were maybe too polite, polite to really say anything to my face, but like th there was stuff like that that happened all the time. Was there a dress code? Did you have to break it? So here's where it gets intense. So I'm just gonna go through what the uniform was as quickly as I can. So pretty much the uniform that we wore every single day was called our number twos, and pretty much what you wore was a blue naval shirt, a blue naval jumper with epaulettes, which were those things that go on your shoulders. I don't know what they're for. And then you know the girls would wear black skirts, they wear black tights, and then they'd have to wear Doc Martin shoes, which kind of cool. Doc Martens are cool, but not when they're compulsory. I guess everyone just hated Doc Martens because we had to wear them. But yeah, the dress code was that for our everyday wear. We also had number ones, which was a different uniform, and the number ones that was what we wore when we had parades. So we pretty much wore like a naval hat, naval jacket, white shirt, tie, naval skirt, and then our shoes were different kind of shoes. They weren't Doc Martens. They were like parade shoes that we had to shine very much. We had to polish them until we could see the whites of our eyes in them. Normal activity for a 13 year old, right? But that's our number twos that we wore every day, our number ones that we wore on parade. There was another uniform that's kind of irrelevant, not going to speak about that, but dress code. So, the number two uniform, which is worn daily, this consists of the following. Blue jumper, including epaulettes, which I spoke about. The blue shirt, all buttons except the top button should be done up. I, I don't think it looked better without the top button done up, so thanks. And it says, if the shirt is worn without the jumper, sleeves should be turned up to just above the elbow using folds the width of the Cut. So we were even told how to roll up our sleeves. If we weren't wearing our jumpers, our sleeves could not be down because that was not school code. We had to roll up our sleeves to above the elbow. They even <laughs> told us how big the folds had to be. And it says all items of number two uniform should be maintained in very good condition. Hair should be neatly groomed and if worn short should not extend below the lower edge of the back of the shirt collar. Long hair should be neatly tied back, not obscuring the face in a neat and tidy fashion using discreet fastenings. So you weren't allowed to wear coloured hair bands, you weren't allowed to wear clips that were coloured, uh, if you had long hair it had to be tied back and by tied back I mean completely tied back uh, I remember on several occasions, every single week, people would get told off for having little, like, dangly bits down the side of their face to frame their face because, you know, they're humans, they're teenagers, they're growing up, they're self-conscious, but no, you had to have your hair completely tied back. No hair. Like, none of the twi- no- no hair, just completely tied back. For jewellery, all you're allowed to wear was a wristwatch and a single charity wristband may be worn. You're only allowed to wear studs for earrings, you're only allowed one piercing, you weren't allowed the cartilage ones, no facial piercings, um, and you're only allowed to wear a necklace if it was like a religious thing, like a cross. And of course, most teenagers aren't religious, uh, where I'm from, but people would wear the cross necklaces because they wanted to accessorize. You weren't allowed to wear makeup, you weren't allowed to wear nail varnish, you were only allowed one plain ring. Your shoes had to be tidy and not scuffed, they had to be polished. Like, everything that we did in that place was regulated. Like, there were specific ways that you had to do things, and if you didn't do them that specifically, then you'd get told off for it. In terms of the boys' dress code, uh, they wore the blue tops, the blue jumpers, and then like obviously just like black trousers, same shoes. Um, but in terms of boys' hair, what does it say? It says, hair shall be neatly groomed, kept above the shirt collar, so they, they tell you how long your hair's allowed to be, taper trimmed at the back, so you have to have a tapered haircut, sides and above the ears to blend with the hairstyle. So they, they, they tell you how to cut your hair. They tell you what haircut you have to have. And if you didn't have that haircut, you get told off. I remember my brother shaved his friend's head for the last few days of school and they both got in really big trouble because his hair was not regulation. You weren't allowed a completely shaved head. And boys were expected to be clean shaven. You could not have a beard, you could not have any facial hair, completely shaved off. Just everything about your appearance, don't, don't even try and be yourself. Don't even try and be an individual. You have to look like this. The dress code was very strict. Uh, it was very strict. There would be punishments if you repeatedly had, like, bad uniform, especially at, like, parade practice. One of the punishments at my school was that, um, if you did something bad during parade, or if you just did something bad in general, you'd get what's called an extra parade. So at break time, while everybody is going back to their boarding house, getting different books, having a bit of a relaxation, you would have an extra parade at break time, which meant that you had to march around the parade ground for the entire break while everybody watches you. And sometimes if you were misbehaving during parade practice, you would get pulled out of your division and told to stand under the flagpole in complete silence. And what's really fun about that is that when you do parade, you march around the parade ground, and when you reach the flag, uh, the head of your division is like, eyes right! And the head of the division salutes the flag that you're standing under, and the rest of your house has to look at you. They're not allowed to not look at you, they're told to look at you while you're over there under the flag. Because you spoke, or because you're out of alignment, or you know, because your uniform wasn't that great. Like, that was a punishment. Which, I get it, it's a great punishment, it's horrible, but you know, I feel like that's a bit much for a 13 year old for the entire school to just be looking at you as you're being publicly humiliated, you know. So yeah, there was a dress code. Did I have to break it? 
I got to a point in my life where I did not give a shit anymore, so I kind of just, whenever I didn't have to wear uh, my normal uniform, I would just put my PE kit on. And I was a sports scholar, I did sports all the time, so people would ask, I'd be like, oh, you know, like I've got... I've got training at break or, you know, I've got a match, I've got a match after lunch or anything like that. Any excuse not to wear the uniform I took, but uh, <laughs> it was very intense, uh, the dress code. The next question is, was it much different to just a regular school? I feel like at this point in this video, this is kind of a pointless question, but yeah, very different. Most schools don't have school six days a week. Most schools don't wear naval uniform or march or, you know, it was not normal. Next question, did they talk about the LGBTQIA at that school or was it kind of ignored? They completely ignored the whole LGBT thing, which looking back, it was dreadful and should not have been allowed. But pretty much at my school, every single year, there was anti-bullying week and usually they'd be themed. And I remember specifically one year, the theme was gonna be, you know, protecting or like how to support LGBT kids. And that year we just did not have anti-bullying week. We just did not have it. LGBT stuff was never brought up. Uh, it wasn't brought up in house by any of the house Masters, it wasn't brought up in assemblies, it wasn't brought up in lessons, unless it was brought up in RS, in which the head of the church at my school was a homophobe. And he actually told a kid that asked, like, hey, if, if I was gay, would I go to hell? He was straight up just like, yeah. And then directed them to a conversion therapy website. So, <laughs> The, you know, the outlook of the LGBT community at that school, was it was not great. Um, it was ignored, and when it wasn't ignored, it was brought up and laughed at. I remember so many RS lessons where, you know, it was brought up in part of the syllabus, like homosexual relationships. What do Christians think of that? What do, you know, Quakers think of that? Uh, what do Catholics think of that? Of course it was brought up in RS, but it was always brought up as like a ho 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 they get stoned kind of way. Like that's that that's the way it was brought up. I remember speaking to a kid that was gay and they told me that they were told by their housemaster that they should probably not pursue a relationship at this school. And I remember they were moved dorm for homophobic reasons. I I I don't I don't remember the extent of it, but just like there was no hope or support or any ounce of positivity for anybody in the LGBT community. At least when I was there. I was gonna say maybe it's changed, but it's not. I've kept in contact with kids that are gay. Or as in like they've come to me because I went to that school. It's not changed. There's bad things. It was really not good. And I, I don't know how they got away with it. Which obviously just makes me sad because like there were there were kids there that were like absolutely lovely. There were so many kids there that were lovely. But of course there were kids there that like they're just a product of their environment. They're a product of their parents telling them how to think. And they're a product of being in this like insular little circle of people that aren't real. But like there, there was just you just you just you just wouldn't want to be LGBT at that school. You just wouldn't want to be at all. Like there are so many kids that either go to that school now, have finished the school after me, or were at that school before me and found out about like the whole trans thing. Like I've I've been in contact with so many people from that school, and the stuff we talk about is just like they just tell me like horrible stories of stuff that happened to them at that school in regards to like LGBT stuff. It's really sad. Like it's really sad because. <laughs> For obvious reasons, it's a bad thing to be discriminatory towards people because of their sexuality or gender identity. But like, another thing is that just like, I finished school in 2017. I'm 22, I'm in my 20s, but I am not old. I started that school in 2012, not that long ago. And I feel like the fact that, you know, a lot of schools would have like GSAs. A lot of schools would actually talk about LGBT stuff. A lot of schools would have kids that like felt happy to come out and felt, you know, positive that there would be people around them that would like them or people around them that would support them. It's just kind of a bummer that like, that was not, a thing at my school at all. When I tell you I could not have come out, I could not have come out. I, I could not have done that. I was already going through a lot that, that had nothing to do with like LGBT stuff. I was already going through a lot. I don't know what would happen. I would just <laughs> not vibe. Somebody asked, would you put your kid in boarding school? Why? Um, God. Uh, so here, here's the thing, like, my brother had a great time at boarding school, and that school was a great fit for him. Obviously, it was not a great fit for me. I don't know how I feel about the fact that there are some kids that just because they have money or their parents have money, they are just given, like, this step above everybody else in the country. They're given access to, like, better education. They're given access to, like, things that will put them ahead in life. I don't think there should be that level of inequality. Would I send my kids to boarding school? I would not want my kid to be a boarder unless they really want wanted to. Like, I, I don't have any kids. Obviously, I'm 22. I straight up would not want to send my kid to boarding school, uh, unless they really wanted to go. But, you know, there, there are benefits to going to boarding school. Like, you can become really close with the people that are in your school. Being around teachers all the time, maybe you could get more help when it comes to work. Like, there are benefits, but, like, I just would not. It, it's, 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 it, I, I don't know the repercussions of sending a 13-year-old away from home for five years. I, you know, I, I don't know. Somebody said, I feel like being surrounded by girls only 24-7 would be awful. How do you cope with that if you need it? 
Uh, again, it was not a girls only school. Here's the thing, when I was in that boarding house, I knew I was trans, obviously I knew I was trans, but because I <laughs> knew I was trans and I was so angry at my situation, I was angry at myself that I couldn't come out. I was angry at the fact that the school was so shit for LGBT people. I was angry that I was like in the wrong body. I was angry that I was in the wrong boarding house. So I guess the way that came out was that like, I remember being like, I hate being around girls all the time. Like, I'm not a girl. This is so sh Looking back, it's a stupid division to make because obviously girls and boys aren't that different. But when you're put in an environment like that in boarding school where you're told that girls and boys are that different and everybody acts like girls and boys are that different. It was difficult just because like, obviously I felt out of place. I knew I would feel probably even more out of place in a boys boarding school because if I was trans and they'd see me as a weirdo. I guess it was hard being around girls 24 seven purely because of things like the girls would do stuff that like unknowingly would like hurt my feelings or make me feel bad about myself. Like I remember like on several occasions, people being like, oh, please can I put makeup on you? And I remember being like, you can put makeup on me on our final night of school. Like our leavers ball, you can do that. And then of course when it got to it, I, I refused. But I remember people being like, oh, I wish I could do your makeup or like trying to do that or like straightening my hair or like encouraging me to grow my hair out, which for like a year and a bit, I did grow my hair out purely because other people were telling me I should. Uh, I never wanted to and I hated it the entire time. But like stuff like that, like telling me they wanted to do my makeup, trying to do my makeup, trying to straighten my hair, trying to like style me, trying to like, like obviously we had like dinners, we had like dances, not dances, we had like dinners. And obviously in preparation for that, we'd go out and we'd get dresses and people would be like, oh, you should try this push up bra, that kind of stuff. And I'm not angry at anyone that like, told me to do that because for all they knew, I was a girl and they were helping me feel good about myself. It did not help. But I guess that was kind of the hardest bit, like just like being surrounded by that kind of thing where people were constantly trying to be like, oh, you should do this. You look really pretty and like getting compliments, which is nice, I appreciate people trying to compliment me, but the compliments I'd get when I wore dresses were like, oh, you have such a nice body, you have like such a tiny waist, and like, oh, your butt looks great, and like, oh, your boobs, like, like that kind of stuff. People would be really encouraging, which is really nice, but when I hated every aspect of the things they were complimenting me for, it was like, horrible. Imagine you look at yourself in the mirror every day, and for some reason, you just really hate your nose, you hate everything about it, but people always compliment you on your nose. They always bring up the fact that they love this part of your nose. They love how much it points. They love how much, you're, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing where it's like, oh, they're trying to be nice. It's coming from a good place, but please stop. So I guess that was probably the hardest part about being surrounded by girls all the time. It was nothing to do with the fact that there were girls. It was to do with the fact that they treated me like I was one. Somebody asked, was it easier to fit in because you liked boys? I guess I can't really answer that question because I, I wouldn't know the experience of not liking boys and how that would feel. I remember trying really hard to compensate for the fact that people thought I was a lesbian by being like, I love men. And I do love men. Like, I had a big ass shirtless poster of Tom Daly that somebody gave me in, in my dormitory. I would talk about boys all the time. My screensavers were always boys. I felt like I had to overcompensate for the fact that I like guys because I looked like a guy and to people that didn't know much about the LGBT community, they would see a girl that looked like a guy and think that she's a lesbian. So people thought I was a lesbian. <laughs> so of course I would overcompensate. So I feel like me liking guys did not bring me closer to anyone really because I did not really have any like real crushes on anybody because I was so uncomfortable with the idea that somebody would like me in that way but they'd like me in the way that they'd like a girl like the idea of somebody fancying me and the idea of somebody being attracted to like female aspects of myself made me really uncomfortable so like I just repressed uh, that part of myself. I obviously had like a few crushes. I had a boyfriend for one day because I thought he had nice hair and he liked sports and I liked sports. But I don't think liking boys brought me closer to anybody because one, people thought I was a lesbian. I really wanna know how many people thought I was lying about liking guys. I really wanna know how many. But no, I, I don't think that made me feel closer to anybody because I, I, I liked guys in a gay way, <laughs> which, which is different, I guess. How did living essentially a double life affect your mental health? <sighs> Jesus Christ. I like, I, I, <sighs> This is something I think about a lot, especially recently since I've started therapy. I, I've only spoken about it in my last therapy appointment, so very recently. But it was horrifying and confusing and terrifying. Like, I was constantly anxious and constantly in fear that people would find my social media and show everybody about it. I was, I was convinced that people would post about it, that they would confront me about it, that they would bully me for it, that they'd tell teachers, that they'd tell my parents. Like, I, I, th there were so many things I was scared of because obviously if you're like in school as one person and then you're online as a completely different person, well, I, I was myself online, I wasn't myself in school, but if you're in my school and 
one, you're seeing me do that, it would be very confusing and probably concerning, to be honest. I was constantly in fear that something would happen to do with that. I'm very lucky that not that much happened. I mean, it was traumatizing that people made these exposing pages about me. Like, I only realized last week when Kari put it this way, but he was like, yeah, you were doxxed. Like, I was doxxed at the age of 15 about something that I was like, so not ready to talk about. So like, yeah, not only did I have the fear uh, that people would find my account. I also felt like I can never fully be myself, which is one thing when you're at school, you can't really be yourself and at least you can come home and do what you want and be yourself and be whoever you like at home because there's nobody that's gonna bully you for that. Um, whereas like I was constantly in school. I had my own room in my last year of school, which was nice. I had like my own space and my roommates were all really lovely. They were all really nice. But like if for five years of your life for like 95% of the time you did not feel comfortable, or you did not feel like you could be yourself, or you felt like you were lying to everybody around you, that like obviously will affect <laughs> your mental health. And I feel like I probably haven't fully realized the extent of which that affected me yet. And I'm 22 now, I left school five years ago. But yeah, it was constantly stressful, it was very overwhelming all the time. I was always really anxious. And I guess because it was difficult for me to actually be myself, it was kind of confusing to know who I really was and like where my role in society was because the only place where I could be myself was when I met up with friends that I met online. And that was very rarely because I went to boarding school. So I could be Noah, I could be myself around them and I could speak to them about that kind of stuff. But the majority of my life was in school. And it's like a very hard thing to go through on its own, even without the whole doxing thing coming out. <laughs> but like, there was always added things that added pressure to it, so it wasn't fun. Like, I'm old enough now to look back on my life back then and be like, wow, I wish I could father you, or like, be your big brother, because I really needed like, <laughs> I really needed something. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was not a good time. Would not recommend that to anybody, unless you're in my specific situation. I guess, obviously there were benefits to being Noah online and someone else at school. I, I grew a platform for being myself online. I, I made the best friends that I still have today online from doing that. So like, there are benefits, but like, it was a lot. <laughs> were people misogynistic towards you? People were misogynistic in general. Just in general, because it was a, because it was a very traditional environment. It was a very Christian environment. Obviously views towards women and views towards gender roles in general, very outdated very behind. I can't think of specific instances of that happening to me, but I, I just remember having the feeling of being very frustrated that I was treated so differently to the boys. And obviously there were like a bunch of lovely guys that would just treat me like one of the bros. They would just treat me like one of the bros and that was the best. But like, obviously, misogyny to everybody that was a girl, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Somebody said, could you cook your own food? Now, here's a fun question. As I told you earlier, the food was very bad. It was not fun. I did not enjoy it at all. So what did I do? I, <laughs> I know now that I have ADHD, I have sensory processing disorder. I, textures and tastes and noises and thick, like I am very easily overstimulated and there are foods that I just can't eat without gagging or throwing up. Even the thought of doing them, I can't do it. So what did I do? I just, I just brought food into school and I would cook in the, in the boarding house galley, which was the kitchen. I did that. That too much apparently and then I got banned from cooking in there and the reason was that it would encourage other people to cook which to be completely honest I think is like a dreadful thing to say to anybody but in the environment of any high school especially with girls like body image issues very big things like we were growing up we had Instagram everybody was looking at Instagram there were obviously a lot of girls with like severe body image issues no doubt a lot of them had eating disorders I don't know how much more likely it would have been in boarding school than in like a normal school I, I, I saw it but I just think the idea of like not allowing somebody to cook in their own house because it was my house I lived in there. That was bad. That was really bad that that happened Like I would go to the mess hall and have the school dinner and not eat it because I did not like it It was it was not good and I had like eating issues because of the sensory issues I'd come back to house try and cook and then I just couldn't um, so you know, I would just eat sweets I just ate a lot of sweets and that was not good. But yeah, and I, I don't know what it was. I think it was just my housemistress. I'm sure she probably feels bad about it now, but like the boys' houses, they're allowed to cook all the time because they needed their protein because they were growing boys. I remember the, the guys would like cook themselves breakfast. They'd have bacon at break time. Like they, they, they had whatever they wanted. It was, it was different rules for the boys than it was for the girls. But yeah, I was not allowed to cook because I cooked too much because I wanted to eat food. Do you ever regret not coming out at school? I mean, I can't say yes to that because of everything that I've told you earlier on in this video. I regret that the school had those opinions. I don't regret not coming out because if I came out, it would not have been good. Somebody asked, was there anything you liked about going to boarding school? Yes, of course there are things I liked about it. I was a sports scholar. I loved sports. I could play hockey a lot of the time. I love playing hockey. I was in the hockey team, played a lot of hockey. That's a benefit. I was in marching band. I really enjoyed marching band because I love playing drums. They made me head drummer. 
uh, two years early. But you know, I, I enjoyed the marching band, I enjoyed the music school, I enjoyed having drum lessons. I, I had a good few times with friends, like we did some fun stuff I guess, that there's not like overwhelming memories of it. What else did I enjoy? I mean, once a year there was like a paintballing trip for Borders. I went paintballing once, that was fun. There are a few teachers that I got on with really well. I enjoyed learning about psychology. I enjoyed the fact that like on our birthdays we were cooked brownies, although no I didn't. My birthday's in August. I never got given brownies. Um. <laughs> I enjoyed the fact that people were given brownies on their birthday. I don't know, man. Like, I'm sure there were some things I enjoyed. When I think back, I'm like, ah, oh, that sucked, but there were some cool things. So I guess that's nice. How often did I see my family? Well, my parents were very divorced. Very, very, very divorced. So, you know, I would come home on Wednesday sometimes, or Saturday sometimes, and I would see my family maybe not much. <laughs> Not much at all, I guess. It's all in the summer holidays, but you know, Wednesdays I'd come home sometimes, but I'd be exhausted. Cause like, 7am until like, 8.30pm, that's a long day for anybody, let alone a kid. But yeah, I'd come home, and I'd be exhausted, and tired, and depressed, so I got to see my family like, twice a week, but obviously because my parents were divorced, I didn't see them both at the same time. I lived with my dad for most of the time, so I saw my dad more than I saw my mom. I saw my mom maybe once every two weeks, maybe. Which sucked, because I, I have a very close relationship with my mom. Was it really as strict as all the movies make it out to seem? Uh, yes. In some ways, in some ways, no. Uh, but in most ways, yeah. Do you think it was harder being closeted in a boarding school than in a regular school? I hate to be like, I had it harder, but like, yeah. 100%. People that went to normal schools could go home and no matter how shit of a day they had at school, they could go home and be away from that. I guess less with social media, but at least physically you're away from that. Whereas like if I had a hard day at school, I didn't go home. I just had a hard day at school and then continued that hard day at school. Someone said, did you sing and do covers at school? If so, was it well received? Yeah, I, I filmed a few covers. Uh, I, I filmed this cover of Dumb by Nirvana. <laughs> Were you allowed to stay up late? Well, uh, no. Uh, for the first year, when you were 13, you had your phones taken off of you at bedtime, which is quarter to 10. Not a smart idea for children that are away from their parents in a new environment, which is terrifying, not a good idea to take away their one point of communication with their family, right? It's not a good idea. Hope they're not still doing that, but I bet you they still are. So like, were you allowed to stay up late? No, if you were loud after bedtime, or if you turn the lights on, the house mistress would come around the rooms and be like, go to bed. And then when you got older, they stopped taking your phone away, but they turned the Wi-Fi off at 12. And even before midnight, so many things were blocked. So you couldn't go on Facebook. You couldn't really use social media unless you were, you know, not on the Wi-Fi, but because it was in the middle of nowhere, there was no signal. It sounds like prison. Like they take your phone away. They take all contact to your family away when you're 13, when you just start. And then when you're older, they've blocked social media anyway. And then the Wi-Fi turns off at 12. Oh, this sounds so bad. This sounds so bad. Last question, were people at the school supportive after you came out? Yeah, I didn't have any mean comments or any mean messages. I had very supportive comments from people I didn't expect and supported messages from people I didn't expect, which I do appreciate. A, a few people unfriended me, and I had heard from some friends that, you know, some people were bitching about me, but at that point, I was like, who the f cares? I don't give a shit about you. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna come out. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. Because I was out of that school, and I was able to do that. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, put them down below. But yeah, maybe you learned something new about boarding school. Maybe if you thought, oh, boarding school would be fun, Think again. But yeah, have a good day, though. See you later, losers. Goodbye.